What's up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. On the day before yesterday, we talked about how to open or fund a Lightning Network payment channel uh, with sending funds from both Alice's and Bob's individual single signature uh, UTXO to the two out of two plus time block multi-signature. Uh, and then we have also talked about the commitment transaction, which changes the state of this multi-signature transaction in accordance to how much money Alice and Bob have transacted in between them. And then also they will give out the revocation secret in the case where Alice or Bob wants to steal the money for them, uh, from them, then they can defend themselves. That's all what happens in the opening and the commitment transaction. Well, but how about closing a Lightning Network payment channel? Well, there are different scenarios here that are possible. Well, first and probably the most likely case, hopefully, is going to be a cooperative close. So Alice and Bob are still communicating with each other, sending packages back and forth. And they have done, let's say, a million commitment transactions and really uh, done the most that they can out of their payment channel. But now they want to close it and use the funds on chain somewhere else. Uh, so Alice can go to Bob Mate, like, I want to close my payment channel. And here is the most recent state with Alice's valid signature. And then Bob can sign the same uh, closing transaction uh, if he agrees to this current state, right? Uh, and if he agree, and he can then provide the output, a single signature address uh, that the closing transaction will be spent to. So let's assume that the current commitment state is Alice three, Bob seven. Then Alice will give Bob a signed signature. Uh, that releases out of the two of two multi-sig, um, three Bitcoin to Alice's public address and seven to Bob's. And when Bob sees this transaction, he can check if it's valid and sign it himself. And then we have the most basic case. We have a valid two out of two signature, which is then broadcasted to the entire Bitcoin network so that every full node is going to verify if it's correct and then include in a block and mine it with enough accumulated proof of work. And so with this cooperative close, it's just a regular two out of two multi-signature. All the other clauses can be completely ignored here. But of course, there are cases uh, where Alice and Bob, for example, um, are no longer online together. So let's say uh, Bob is out on vacation and he has a blackout on, uh, in his house right? and he no longer is online with his full note. But Alice now still wants to use this money, so she then would like to close this payment channel although Bob is not online. Well, how can she do that? She has, um, she has Bob's most, or she has Bob's signature of the most recent state, right? And she also has uh, the revocation secret of all the previous states. So what she can do now is she can sign a transaction herself uh, that signs off on the most recent state and then uh, publish this transaction. But because she does not have Bob's signature, she actually has to wait for the time lock that was initially set, right? So the, the funding transaction is into a two out of two or single signature after a certain time. So let's say then Alice is publishing this closing transaction, but it is only valid after let's say one week. So with this one single signature closing transaction, only after one week is it going to be valid and included into the blockchain. And thus, with an uncooperative close where one party is offline, uh, the closing party needs to wait for a certain amount of time. Now, why is that? Well, as we said yesterday, that in the case where Alice is actually malicious and she wants to close a, with an old commitment transaction, with an old state, Right? Let's, let's assume the current state is 3.7 and she wants to close with 5.5. Five. Then she can do that. She can propose a old chain, uh, a old channel state because she has valid signatures, uh, but she has to wait for, let's say, one week or a day or a month. Uh, and in that meantime, Bob can come online, see this closing transaction, and realize that it's wrong, that it's invalid, that it is a old state. 
And then because Bob has the revocation secret of this old state, he can prove that this is an old state. And with this proof, he can also get all the funds from Alice. And therefore, we need to have this little time delay, not only to make sure that uh, that Alice can alone, uh, or well, first, that Alice can alone without Bob, potentially close the channel, right, if one of them drops out, but to still be certain that Bob has a chance uh, to defend himself if this closing transaction is wrongful. So you need to make sure that you are online at least once in this time lock period that you've described uh, in the funding transaction. And then you can close it. So again, there are different ways of closing a payment channel. The cooperative way, easy, two out of two multi-signature. The time delayed way of a valid uh, channel state, the most recent one, where it's just Alice's signature and she can release the funds out of the multi-sig after the time lock. Or then the worst case where one actor is malicious and publishes a old state, he still has to, uh, he has to wait for the time lock, right? Because it's, it does not have both signatures. And the other party can defend himself in this time lock and steal all the money from the attacker. So these are the three different options that a payment channel can be closed. And what happens afterwards is, well, you have your Bitcoin on a regular a single signature address that you can then spend like any other Bitcoin on chain UTXO as before. But again, in the meantime, after funding and closing, you could have done a billion commitment transactions, all of chain and rather secure, because you would know that with every channel update, you have the potential of settling it on the blockchain and you can defend yourself if that settlement is wrong. Uh, so here, uh, quite a interesting and nuanced complex. And we now have covered all the different stages of the payment channel. So from uh, opening, funding, to committing, to closing. And now in the future, we're going to talk a bit more about how we can route payments throughout all these different types uh, of payment channels. Pierce, thank you very much here for joining me. If you like the show, leave a like and, subscri like and subscribe. And if you would like to support me personally, go to teleco.im slash Max and get early access to all these shows. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.